My name is Simon and this is how to build a racing car. Over the course of this project there have been a lot of people and companies who have helped me in various ways, so I thought I'd do something to say thanks to them. I came up with the idea of using the logo I've been using coupled with a 3D printed model of the car which would provide a nice tactile and visual gift. The 3D print was made using a special model which I drew in SolidWorks. The scale feature coupled with the configurations meant I was able to create models at three different scales while still maintaining the correct minimum thickness for 3D printing. The 3D printing process was a selective laser sintering process which basically lays out thin layers of powder and uses a laser to melt only the portion of the layer which is actually part of the model. This has an advantage over other types of 3D printing in that parts can be unsupported during the production process. Without this I'd have had to design support into the model for the printing process which would have to be removed later. To keep costs down I nested various different sized models within one another. The pricing was based on the bounding box around the part that you order so by nesting them I was able to get many more models for the same price as one of the larger models. These are the 3D prints in three different sizes. 1 to 20, 1 to 40 and 1 to 60 scales. I was really happy with how these turned out, even the smallest size retained the detail of the larger ones. I wanted to make the base using the fiberglass and foam that I used while building the car. It would be a nice way to incorporate part of the real car's materials and build processes. So just like making the plug, I used the hot wire cutter to cut the foam squares that would form the base. I printed the design I wanted onto paper and cut it into the correct shape such that it would wrap around the edges of the block. I then used the epoxy to glue the paper onto the foam block. And then laid a single layer of the twill fiberglass weave on top. This would end up translucent, leaving the design visible behind. A layer of peel ply goes on top, simply to allow me to remove it from the mould a little bit easier later on. I epoxied the fiberglass down to the foam on the back and used a square of fiberglass to enclose the foam completely. The completed block will be a composite that's very strong and lightweight. Finally, clamps push the block into the mould. After 24 hours, the block can be removed. A little bit of work is required to clean up the edges. I'm certainly no professional fiberglasser, so the final surface wasn't perfect and unlike the body I wasn't able to add bog or I'd destroy the translucency. I therefore had to just try my best to get as good a finish on the first go as possible. I then put a second coat of epoxy over the top and sides. This is to give the surface a shiny finish rather than the dull textured finish that the peel ply leaves. This is when I attach the 3D print to the block. After 24 hours, the epoxy is all dry and I'm left with the finished product. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the small deviation. If, by the way, you think you'd be interested in buying a 3D printed model of my car, let me know. If there's enough interest, I'll figure out the exact pricing and how delivery and stuff would work. Anyway, enjoy the holidays.